a lot like the topic I discussed in the last episode about electric motors, there's not a whole lot new and really earth-shattering in the world of drives, but it is an important topic to understand what they are. And what a drive is in the context of motion control is what we're going to talk about this episode. I'm going to use a lot of old graphics because really, again, nothing much has changed. But if you have any questions or applications you'd like to discuss, reach out to us at automationsupport at valen.com or the Motion Control Show. We're happy to help. I'm Corey Foster. Let's see what we can learn. The definition of an amplifier or drive is it takes a low level signal in and produces a high output power to a load. This powers a load. It could be a motor, it could be a linear or rotary, it could be a fan, it could be a valve. It could be a lot of different things, but it's usually in response to some sort of controller or terminal or PC or something that has logic to it. If you're used to somewhat more sophisticated sound equipment, you might be familiar with a tuner or an amplifier, which then powers the speaker. The tuner brings in a radio station, for example, or whatever the music is, and then that goes through an amplifier, which puts out the, enough power to the speakers. Speakers are essentially a one-phase motor. It's very similar pretty much to what we're talking about with electric motors in the last episode. So the analogy here is a controller to a drive to a motor. So we use the term drive and amplifier interchangeably. Now some people talk about the drive in terms of the mechanics. What's the mechanical transmission or maybe the motor? But really when we talk about a drive and motion control, it's the amplifier. It's the electronics. There's different types. There's the linear amplifier, which is shown over there on the right, which has an output amplitude that's controlled as a linear function of the input. And it's a great result of electrically quiet and non-distorted output, but they're larger and less efficient. So we don't see them very much in industrial automation. They do exist, but we just don't see them very much. They're much better for lower power stuff. So we typically use PWM or pulse width modulated amplifiers, which has the output consisting of a series of constant amplitude pulses whose width is a linear function of the input. I'll come back to that in a moment. The result is more efficient but with some electrical noise and distortion. And if you want to know more about this, go back to my episode 9 on linear noise and then how to deal with that. When I started in this industry 23 years ago or so, the analog drives were definitely predominant. Uh, there were very few digital drives on the market. I didn't use any until pretty much the next year with the manufacturer that I was working with. But the analog type uh, drives are basically um, all the all the electronics are made by linear circuits and the adjustments are made with potentiometers. So those can drift a little bit and you have to use a little screwdriver to adjust it periodically. The digital type drives have their functions all created by microprocessors via firmware and all those adjustments are made via computers and, and software. It doesn't drift so it's nice and compatible and it can be used with a lot of different communication bus structures and protocols. 8 to 20 kilohertz is the typical chopping frequency for the PWM. Now I've worked with drives up to 40 kilohertz uh, which are particularly needed for low inductance motors. We'll come back to that in just a second as well. But 8 to 20 kilohertz is very typical. I've seen 4 also, uh, 16, but those are the typ typ uh, typical ranges. So here's what a power circuit looks like for a PWM drive. You have the AC power coming in on the left. It goes through a rectifier, and then it gets filtered a little bit to help with the electrical noise. And then it goes back through a DC to AC inverter. Notice we have AC coming in on the left. We have then to DC and then back to AC and it's AC that goes out to the motor. What you see there under the inverter is essentially a series of uh, H bridges where the transistors are turned on and off in a certain sequence. What, you show, what I show here right in the middle is one coil of a motor. So when this is turned on and this is turned on, the current goes through there. And then when it's switched and these are off and these are on, the current will go back the other way. And that's done per phase of each motor. So it looks something like this, where you have the bus voltage is chopped into little pulses. Notice the voltage is the same. You get the positive and you have the negative, but it changes the current as it goes through. And so the amount of current is adjusted by the width of these pulses. If we look at it a little more closely, 
it has to do with the voltage equaling the inductance times the change in current over the change in time, and it's using bus voltage. When the 120 volts AC comes in, it gets rectified up to 170 volts DC. 230 volts AC gets rectified up to 340, and so on. So that's what the bus voltage is that we talk about. That's the potential, and that is this voltage here. So if we're at zero volts here, that's a positive 170. Here's a negative 170. A lot of people will make the mistake of troubleshooting a drive and motor problem by putting a multimeter between the motor and drive and seeing what the voltage is. But you can see the voltage is constantly changing from 170 to zero to a negative 170. So they get some weird voltage. Now you can see that voltage if you put an oscilloscope on there. But again, that's not what you want to look at. If you're troubleshooting between a motor and drive, what you want to put on there is a current clamp and look at the current as it's changing. Now, if the motor's not moving, you're stuck at whatever that current is at in that location. So this is one location of the motor. As it moves, though, it approximates an AC sign. So again, there's some terminology that tends to confuse people. Is it an AC motor? Well, a servo motor is a type of electric motor and the AC uh, servo drive is a type of drive, but a servo motor approximates an AC sine wave as the motor is moving. So this is one electrical cycle of the motor. And you can see here as the transistors in the H bridge are changing, you can see the current kind of going up and down as it's controlled. How quickly that's controlled has to do with the inductance of the motor and the chopping frequency of the drive. So if you have a low inductance motor, that current can change very quickly and you need to have a high frequency drive. That's why I worked with a 40 kilohertz drive because that motor had a really low inductance and that was very important for matching them. I hope this helps understand the basics of what a drive is. We're going to be talking more about drives and the different types in the future. If you want to get some help from us, reach out to us here at this email address on our website. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. I hope that helps.